Welcome to the Cathedral of St. Paul. I'm Melinda, I serve as the Dean here, and we're so glad that you've joined us for this service of worship. This is the Easter Vigil, and it traditionally begins with a fire. And the fire's outside. And so we would love for you, if you would like to come and join us, we'll be starting in about four minutes. We will light the fire and begin the service from outside. If you wanna go out those doors and gather on the Sixth Street sidewalk, you'll have a perfect view of everything the lighting of the fire and the procession in. Equally, if you find it cold and you would like to remain in your seats, that's lovely also. I just wanted to let you know what was happening and make that available to you. I hope that you've gotten a bulletin and a candle and uh, hold on to that bell. We'll ring it in the middle of the service. So if you'd like to join us, out the six street doors onto the sidewalk. Worship will begin in about five minutes. Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, the Church invites her members dispersed throughout the world to gather in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord, in which by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share in his victory over death. Let us pray. O oh God, through your Son, you have bestowed upon your people the brightness of your light. Sanctify this new fire and grant that in the Paschal Feast we may so burn with heavenly desires that with pure minds we may attain to the festival of everlasting light. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Let us hear the record of God's saving deeds in history, how he saved his people in ages past, and let us pray that our God will bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. And the Lord said, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots, and his chariot drivers and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them. All of Pharaoh's horses chariots and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses.
I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will put within you and I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then, then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors and you shall be my people and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. King Nebuchadnezzar made a golden statue whose height was 60 cubits and whose width was six cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent for the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to assemble and come to the dedication of the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. When they were standing before the statue that Nebuchadnezzar had set up, the herald proclaimed aloud, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble, you are to fall down and worship the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. Therefore, as soon as all the peoples had heard the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble, all the peoples nations and languages fell down and worshiped the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Accordingly, at this time, certain Chaldeans came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum and entire musical ensemble shall fall down and worship the golden statue and whoever does not fall down and worship shall be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire there are certain jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of babylon shadrach meshach and abednego these pay no heed to you o king they do not serve your gods, and they do not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in a furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought in. So they brought those men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods? not worship the golden statue that I have set up. Now, if you are ready when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble, to fall down and worship the statue that I have made, well and good. But if you do not 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O king, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we shall not serve your gods and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was so filled with rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnace heated up seven times more than was customary and ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to throw them in the furnace of blazing fire. So the men were bound, still wearing their tunics, their trousers, their hats, and their other garments. And they were thrown into the furnace of blazing fire because the king's command was urgent and the furnace was so overheated, the raging flames killed the men who lifted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the furnace of blazing fire. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up quickly. He said to his counselors, Was it not three men that we threw bound into the fire? They answered the king, True, O king. But I see four men unbound, walking in the middle of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the fourth has the appearance of a god, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps and prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of these men. The hair of their heads was not singed, their tunics were not harmed, and not even the smell of fire came from them, Nebuchadnezzar said. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has said, sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree. Any people, nation, or language that utters blasphemy against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb, and their houses laid in ruins. For there is no other God who is able to deliver in this way. The word of the Lord. Isn't that a great story, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? It's, a, it's, it's quite a powerful story, quite a way of seeing how God works. It's also, it's also really meant to be funny. I mean, they're really putting it to the writers here, Daniel. They're really putting it to Nebuchadnezzar. I mean, they're making him look like a, a, a fool. You know, the, the satraps, the governors, when they all come. And every time you hear the harp, the lyre, the trigon, and all the musical ensembles, you will bow down and worship the statue which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. It's a brilliant, it's a brilliant story, a brilliant way of having insight into who and what God is about in our lives now, then and now. 
Interesting that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are just regular old people. This, this is a second uh, exile for the Hebrew people. We heard about their deliverance in Exodus. We heard about their deliverance from Egypt. And now they find themselves again in the Babylonian captivity, again under the thumb of a foreign government, again under under a place where they, they are not free to be who they are. In fact, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are actually their Babylonian names, not their Hebrew names. So even their names were changed as a way of showing subjugation or of, of, of making sure that it was understood what their place was. Now these were mid-level sort of government people. And what I find interesting while all of this is going on with Nebuchadnezzar and he's setting up statues and saying if you must worship them or you'll be thrown into a fiery furnace, that Daniel is nowhere around. It's the book of Daniel, he's nowhere around. Like he was smart enough to get out of town. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are not. They are not. They get, they get called, and Nebuchadnezzar says, you, you know, when you hear the harp lyre, <laughs> no, you will worship the statue that I have set up. And they say, you know, actually, we're not going to do that. Um, we're, we're not going to do it. And he said, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stoke this furnace up seven times hotter than usual and throw you in it. And they say, well, this God that we follow this God who is bringing us to freedom, this God who has shown us life, will, I love their, they're so practical, either will save us from the fire or won't. <laughs> but in any case, we're not bowing down to this statue. There is a law higher than yours, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar gets enraged, throws them in the fire. 50 years ago, 19, the year was 1963, 60 years ago, 1963, on Good Friday, Martin Luther King Jr. and Ralph Abernathy were arrested in Birmingham on Good Friday, having decided that it was quite enough to have been subjugated, quite enough to have found their way to, be, to a place where they could not be who they were. And there we have the letter from a Birmingham jail written over Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and Easter Sunday when, when they were incarcerated at this very time of year in April. They were writing in response to white moderate Christian leaders, one being the Episcopal Bishop of Alabama, who were saying, you know, just hold on, just, just wait. This isn't the right timing. Why would you do this in Holy Week? Um, we're going to get there at some point. We're, we're, on a, we're, we're on the right path. Why are you pushing this? Why, why are you taking it to this level? And they said, you know, we just, we, we will not. We will not worship at this altar any longer. There is a higher law. There is a different law. And the text that Abernathy and King often meditated on during that time was this one, the fiery furnace, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and their civil disobedience to Nebuchadnezzar. Understood, they also understood what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego also understood. Well, God will either save us from this misery, or God won't but we're not doing this anymore. There's a, there's a higher law. God is calling us to a wholeness and a healing beyond what you say, beyond what the civil authorities have to say, there is a higher one. And believing that an unjust law was no law at all. As we, as we prepare to fall into this resurrection and find our healing and wholeness, we, we do well to take a page out of the books of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, King Abernathy, and all of those who are brave enough to stand up and say, there is another way, a higher law, that God will call us into wholeness in a new way. On, in, this, in this time, 
and through this way, God will, will call us ever deeper into the presence and to our salvation. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. Do you desire to be baptized? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? The other candidates will now be presented. from your renunciation of evil? Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? Let us stand and join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? God the Holy Spirit. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? proclaim by word and example the good news of God and Christ. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being?
Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Sydney, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised them to new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works.
a reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin for whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know, I know that you are here looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly, with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Yes. <laughs> I'm Melinda. I serve as Dean of the Cathedral, and we're delighted you've joined us for worship tonight. We're about to celebrate the Eucharist, this meal of bread and wine in which Jesus invites us to his table, and it is his table. So therefore, whatever your walk of life, whatever tradition, you are invited to come forward and receive the bread and wine. Our custom is to receive from the crossing with the bread. You will put your hands out, we'll put it in your hand, and then go, whatever side you come down, go to that side. You can receive the wine or just simply cross your hands over your chest. If you'd like to come forward but not receive, you can put your hands across your chest and we'll offer you a blessing. You come down the center, return by the side. Our wonderful ushers will let you know when to come forward, so you needn't worry about anything. We're so glad that you are here tonight. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say,
gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and designed his body and love. Send us now to the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve. blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Jesus. Hey.